Loud know it, they can feel it. There's one player left. Soon to be cleaned is. up. And Loud have done it. A 2-0 to take out Fnatic in the first match of playoffs here at Champions. So yes, Fnatic lost a game. Only the second time that this roster has lost a game. And it was to Loud here in the playoffs. And this game from Loud was absolutely insane in terms of the quality. And we'll start here with round number three. Just to show you how small the details are in this game that make a difference. So it's Loud's bonus round here, right? They don't have a, a great buy, uh, buy versus Fnatic's buy. Uh, but what they're going to do, again, just tiny, tiny little details here making the difference. So they're going to throw down this Viper Orb here, right? And you might look at this Viper Orb and be like, isn't that just the normal Viper Orb? Well, no. The normal Viper Orb just goes in a bit deeper kind of like this this is what you'll normally see a lot of the time but they've thrown it just here why have they thrown it just here and how is this making a difference whatsoever well it's making a difference because back behind this pillar is leo and he's going to throw a fade horn up on top of this ledge just here kind of where the scoreboard is and the difference is that this viper orb allows these players here to get inside it and hide from the fade uh, reveal early on and that's going to bait Fnatic into running up here and being like, oh, okay, we can take this control. No one's there, right? Or, you know, no one is actually deep out in onto the, you know, kind of A main part just yet. But they are. So then they're going to drop the orb and then they're going to find these kills and straight away we are in a 5v3. And this is the level of detail that Loud had in their game plan. Tiny little things like baiting Fnatic in here with just a slight change of an orb position is the level that this game was being played at. But it, the night fall there, but here we go. Oh what? my god, is that? An attempt, a chance to try and fight over it. Spamming into the corner. No amount of nerdy lineups will save you from this one. It's a deficit of two players now. Those is are down. some ridiculous Pretty shots. Fnatic have got all the pressure on them currently, and the Nightfall didn't even have to be used. Aspas doesn't know about the cross though, already into the back of the side. That's Alphia, he's dropped down. Hasn't made any noise about it, but now spotted as well. But that shot rattled off. Aspas is going to seek to contain, he does. Doesn't get messy, doesn't get hairy, and there it is. One player left standing, it's Chronicle. Desperate to keep the rifle, but won't wow. even get that. A prime came in flawless, a bonus round conversion. But now let's come to round number eight here because Fnatic weren't going to take this lying down either and they had some tricks up their sleeve as well. You can see their 6-1 down here. Loud got off to a great start. And in this round, Loud have a Viper's Pit. And I would guess that this is the clue that Fnatic used because when you have a Viper's Pit here on the attacking side, your propensity to go towards the B site, I think is quite a bit higher, right? The Viper's Pit is just so good on B that, you know, it probably makes it more likely you are going to go to B with a Viper's Pit uh, in hand. And that's exactly what Loud are going to do in this round. Now, Fnatic actually start with three players towards A, but just take a note that they've already put a star down here. And that will become very important later on in the round. But I just want you to note that it's already down before the barriers have even uh, come down here. And so what's going to happen is Fnatic uh, are going to throw a Fade Horn out towards A. It doesn't get destroyed. Boaster is then going to destroy uh, the little baby door here. And Durka comes across. They hear this Fade Prowler coming in there and leo also gets across as well and now what you're about to see is Fnatic going to flood in they're going to send a seize in just here they're then going to raise ult with durka this is going to turn into an astra suck and so it's basically you either get caught by the seas or you're running backwards into the astra suck and you're just going to get destroyed if you are allowed and that is exactly what happens and it just goes to show again the level this game was being played on as i said this star was already down so they already perhaps had the idea that they were coming to be my best guess is that would be because they had a Viper Spit. Starting to flood back into this one with a showstopper in the hands of Durka. If there is any presence here, they want to go for it. Okay, why not? Straight into them! Blown to pieces. It's a bloodbath in main. That proactivity, you love to see it. And there's the value of having the Astro on the team. Tui's playing Omen here, but Boaster just looks amazing with all the ideas he has around the map. Bless. Trying to make something happen against a weak Chronicle, but taking a fight against Leo, and Leo's good for it. Cleaned up. What a play by Fnatic. What a call on that from Boaster and Durka. But now let's come to the second half here and Fnatic's bonus round. This isn't really a bonus round because they actually have full five rifles. So it's really just a full buy round uh, for, for both teams here, really. 
Uh, but again, I just want you in this round. This one's going to take some e explaining really from me uh, because without the context of Fnat Fnatic's attack side, you won't really understand what's going on. Uh, but you'll need to keep an eye here on Aspas and Counting. The raise and fade here fall loud. Because just look where they go when Fnatic move around this map. Because I've seen Fnatic do this pretty much this exact round a lot of times. They play a lot of Lotus and this is kind of the Fnatic. I would call this their standard round. This is like their, their default round, if you will. Not just a default to start round. This is their default round. Where they come and take C early on. And so you see the Loud take A main early on, right? And they leave Bolster over towards C. But then after taking the C control, they drift back towards B. But take a look at Loud instantly. They know you've just lost C main control. You would think like, you know, oh, they, they're towards C guys. Let's keep two people here. No, let's drift instantly towards B as do these guys, right? They instantly know, well, now they're going to come in towards B, right? That's the next place that they're going to go. And you see the Loud here, they actually try and come up with a plan, a little trap, for this exact play, where at this time they try to get the season 8, it doesn't quite hit, but again, it shows you the understanding that they have, the level that they were on in terms of knowing what Fnatic were going to do. Then next, Kownzee and Aspas, you see them, especially Kownzee here, he's already drifting towards A. He's preempting what Fnatic are about to do next, because they're going to come and take A control. Look at this, it's insane! Right, the level of detail and the level of prep that they have, and that means that they have, you know, this extra utility, the extra bodies here. Aspas comes and joins as well. And again, you would be like, wait, guys, they just showed a lot of presence towards B, but you've completely left the B site open. How does that make any sense? It's because they know what Fnatic are going to do, and it's so clever. It's so smart. And then even in their retreat here, I love this as well because I cannot tell you how many teams that this has happened to where Fnatic take this A main control, they've taken B main here and they've pushed you back on C. You're in a big problem as the defenders uh, often if this is the case on Lotus. But take a look at what happens because normally here you will get most pro teams rotating this guy across to just come and watch the stairs, make sure that no one is lurking up there. But Fnatic don't really do that. That's not something that they do very often. And so often other teams will have had three players over towards A. One guy here on B who's about to get pinched from two sides and cannot hold the site, but not loud. They know what Fnatic are going to do. They know that actually this is going to be a B split most likely. And so they leave two players here on B. And yeah, sure, Fnatic will still manage to get the spike down. But because they've got this extra play here and this extra utility, it's going to get them the first kill on Durka. And then Loud are able to win on the retake. But now, and let's see it. Nanoswarm's closed. The there horse. goes the showstopper. It reveals it. Yep, Durka's dropped. Site's going to be theirs, though. Still, that plan will be able to go down. Nothing to really push this one off here. A few seconds to spare. Taking the positions once more. Chronicle watching Leo's back. Doesn't have to worry about the little door here. It's going to be that full retake from Loud. All back section of the site. Sending in the bullets flying their way. Alfie it. Will fall here. There is a pull onto it. A tap to try and force and bait it out. First layer of that utility. It's going to be dragged out of them here, but Fnatic are just playing this so excellently. His diligence shown still. They bait Boaster out wide into the open. No more util! And it's all being covered. Just as I say it, it looked like Fnatic. A chokehold on it, but no. Loud, meticulous with that retake. If we skip ahead a couple rounds again, you will see again the small layers in this game because Fnatic, they're not idiots themselves. They realize that Loud know what they're doing. And so they adjust accordingly here, right? Where again, you see Loud, they got the triple stack towards A. Fnatic here, they again are going to, you know, show some pressure over towards C early on and uh, and actually come and uh, kind of take this control. But now you see the difference where again, look here at what Loud do. They instantly have to show this pressure. Again, look, we got three players looking towards B. They're ready for this little, you know, B excursion from Fnatic. But Fnatic forego that B excursion because they want to hit onto this A site and beat the timing, right? They know that Loud know their timing timings so they don't go with their normal timing they instead come back to a before ever dealing with b right and so they're here way earlier and now it's just two e's alone for when they go to this and that nets them the first kill what are they going to be using through the smoke going to be fading at any moment yet prowler durka satchel up close near sighted but up close and personal but still, there were small little mistakes being made by Fnatic and Loud were just playing so well that they were able to punish them like this. It's going to be liking it in that scenario in particular. Aspas, you are greedy for this, man. There's really no safety there. Need to clear out towards the corner, but a satchel as well to disengage. Kawazine 
He picks up the line of side angle. But as we get into this 3v4 here, there's other things that Loud are doing as well that I thought were really, really good, right? So one is the Viper Wall. Normally, most teams you'll see will do this Viper Wall. It's the Viper Wall that I would suggest that you do if you're playing Lotus, particularly in ranked. But Loud here, they've actually gone for kind of the flipped Viper Wall over towards C. And I think the idea here behind doing this Viper Wall rather than the normal one is actually because Fnatic tend to not go C a ton unless they get an early kill into kind of, you know, this early C fight. Or if they do a C's nade back here, that's the kind of clue that they are going towards this C site. But by doing this wall here, you can create a lot of confusion and you know that you can kind of be a bit more passive with it. You know, we've seen less multiple times now come across towards B and this fiber wall just allows you to kind of hold there in case they do come there. Uh, you know, maybe a bit more on his own Sadak here. He can play with this wall and kind of hold down the back site and not have to worry as much about holding all of the site. But you see that they've got less in here as well, pushed up in towards B. And that allows Sadak to feel free, perhaps to rotate as well, because less will probably hear any footsteps if they do start running back towards C as well. And you'll see as we run this round forward that again, La just had a very good understanding of what Fnatic's tendencies are that, you know, once they've kind of taken this AMA control, you know, maybe they don't come back towards C as much. And even if they do, they feel confident with less in such a position to kind of push up here. And so now what you'll see again is we get the extra player in towards B here. You get now a, a definite crunch on this and you've got two players in towards A as well. It's a really nice setup for Loud. And again, they will be able to close this round out. There's less than 30 seconds available and less is in a spot to be able to destroy any pivot to B. Aspas is one away from his nade again. If he gets another kill, there's 15 seconds. This is done. They have to win the fight towards the back of the site. With this little time as well, Stars dropped down. Satchel for Aspas doesn't seem to really use it. Doesn't land the kill. It's out wide. That's messy. There was no coverage there. Kawazin is going to try and survive now. Horn over the top as well. This plan needs to be committed. I believe there was just four seconds. There is extension towards it. Two versus two. Fnatic desperate to stay in this one. Tucked into the corner now with a horn back online. Leon Boaster, Leo seeking to cross around. It's a slight angle. You can just see Sadak. But still towards the back. It's duels that need to be won. Forced out. Spamming. It's so damn precarious. Dropping down. Sadak rips away the hopes and dreams. Well earned to get themselves into that spot for Fnatic. But right now, Loud are just in such ridiculous form. But if we come to literally the very next round, Loud have already adapted to what Fnatic are going to do. And they know that Fnatic, okay, they've changed their timing slightly. We're not getting caught out by that again. And so let's take a look at this round because you take a look at this. And again, this is one round. They've, they've, they've changed for one round, but Loud have already adapted, right? So again, they come for this fight in towards A. They take the same main control. They actually get the ult orb here as well. And Kalantin is going back towards B. But this time they leave Aspas here, right? Because they know, again, Fnatic you know, might want to forego B here and stay in towards A. So they send out a Boombot, they send out a Prowler over towards B just here. They smoke it off again. They actually destroy this turret, threatening like they could push out towards B. But now, as the pressure is going to come in, you see that the Omen Flash is very good. And now Kalantine is sprinting across back towards A. So now they know that Fnatic, and we're at like at 110 here, right? Before it was often going down to like, you know, that 55 second mark is when Fnatic would normally be taking A. This time they're going up for around 120, 110 instead. And, and Loud know that. And now you see as they're about to come in, we're going to get a C's nade to kill Durkey here. And it's just another great start here for Loud. Across. But for Loud. It really comes down to this fight. A C's nade is beautiful. They knew the Durka has crossed. And there's the punish. The call is made by Fnatic. Well, nothing to do with this area. But Loud, again, know now that Fnatic won't be coming towards there. You see, they instantly start to rotate. As soon as they get that kill, they're happy. They feel like, yeah, Fnatic aren't going to try and re-clear this area now. We've won that fight. They come towards B. They actually do read it slightly wrong because Fnatic are going towards the C site. But they have a killjoy lockdown here, Loud. So perhaps feeling confident that they can just retake with a killjoy lockdown on C if needed. You see that they stick towards B just here. Fnatic do actually come in towards the C site and will take the site. But again, you're going to see Loud just punch punishing the small, small mistakes here from Fnatic. It's going to get a bit hectic in here in just a second, but the Killjoy lockdown, Fnatic may be just not quite fully playing around it, or maybe they were in a way, because they actually have to plant here for, like, you know, the the bad plant is what I'll call it, the plant where you have to stay on site, which against the Killjoy lockdown is a bad plant. I don't know if this is because Bolster is maybe pushed here and feels like, 
you know, hey, let's get the spike planted here and we can create kind of a crossfire here and I'm in a good spot uh, kind of thing. Maybe that is the case, but you'll see that it just gets a bit messy here as Bosa does find that kill. And so they end up in a decent spot, but then he tries to run back. Right, and so now you've planted, and so now they're just not playing around that Killjoy lockdown, as you'll see in just a second, because when this lockdown goes down, of course, the raise is dead, so you don't have that. Sure, they do get a kill back, we end up in a 3v3, but now there's the nowhere to go, and with the spike planted here, like, this round is already over, right? Like, at this point, the round is just over, because they don't have the tools to, like, push this, and so they have to come all the way out here with the spike planted in a bad spot. So again, just small mistakes from Fnatic there. Perhaps, you know, there was a lot going on in this game. As I said, it was very fine margins. But again, Loud come out on top. If they have to respect this though. No way to break it. Got to play off site. And did he really have anything to deal with this? All being revealed up. Nanoswarm's being deaded very early on here. Stacked on top because they just really don't know if they're actually on this one. Smokes, these are brutal to get through. Two years, sticking it onto half already. Nothing to break this at all. It has to be damaged. It has to be killed. And it's not in sight. Loud! They got it all covered, every possibility. And series point on the horizon. And then finally, to end it, it ended as all great games should. We're just a big old brawl. Yeah, this could end right here, right now. Dirk with a satchel up top. Horn, not broken in time, reveals him up close to the corner here. Gotta land the shots! The nades done the damage. Where is it? A response needs to be made, and it's just not there. The lurk play. By Boaster up through B. If anybody could save them, perhaps it would be him. Already but Leo, it's a wraparound. He's left already spike. behind him. It's all up to Boaster. And this is it. A single round stands before them. A single player stands before them. But Loud are on the cusp. This would be Fnatic's second ever loss on Lotus. Both to Loud. And their second loss ever. Only Liquid being able to take down this super team before. And they went and won. The EMEA trophy. Loud know it. They can feel it. There's one player left. Soon to be cleaned is. up. And Loud have it's done it. A 2-0 to take out Fnatic in the first match of playoffs here at Champions.